Hello to all our viewers of Leadership Talks for Emerging Leaders. Today we are starting season two, episode number one. Leadership Talks for Emerging Leaders is for all those emerging leaders who are on this path of transformation and are looking for ideas from leaders who have gone through this journey. Today, myself, Kiran Deep Sandhu, along with Ram Ramakrishnan are hosting this show and we have a leader over here with us to share his growth journey. Over to you, Ram. Let me welcome uh, Mr. Santos Mahalingam. <clears throat> I have the privilege of having Santos Mahalingam. He had a distinguished career in banking and ITS industry over 26 years before he decided to don the hat of an entrepreneur. Why don't we just listen from him to how his journey of this two and a half decades was. Why don't you start with that, Mr. Santos? Thank you. And uh, at, the outset, uh, at the outset, thank you for hosting me. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful to have this session to talk to both of you today. Uh, on my long journey, uh, Raman Kiran, uh, it's actually, as you said, right, it's almost 26 years of my career and majority of it I spent in banking and ITS industry. A large part of my career uh, I spent with Standard Chartered Bank, uh, working with multiple geographies. And uh, my latest job was with a Middle East bank uh, called Mashak Bank, based out of Dubai and then in Bangalore, set up their hub. Uh, all these years, what really excited me is the challenge with respect to do, do something new uh, and build certain legacies when you leave it. Because the biggest benefit which you get in any kind of career is what you leave behind, not what you actually achieved in the period. Because that's what people talk about. You say you left back a legacy, which is mm -hmm. wonderful. And it is continuing the mm -hmm. way it is being done. And not necessarily that after you left, it just got fallen apart. Right? So that is the consistency which you need to build in. And in the course of my journey, I had the I was fortunate to work with uh, multiple cultures, uh, multiple set of people. Uh, I was supporting mm -hmm. almost five countries in my work with Standard Chartered and later in Middle East. I would have worked with almost 30 to 40 nationalities. And what I learned over a period of time is how best you can change yourself to suit their kind of culture mm -hmm. than trying to adapt somebody else. That's something which I learned long back saying. You cannot change others too much. You have to change yourself. So mm -hmm. as leaders, constantly evolving ourselves, constantly learning, constantly adapting to situations, uh, constantly fine-tuning ourselves to uh, you know, extract the best from the people whom we are working with and also understanding the nuances of each person. And more importantly, I believe that uh, the more you understand the strengths of others with whom you deal with, be it at your peer group, be it somebody's seniors and your team, and you're able to extract maximum from that strength, worry less about the weakness. That is your clearly what will, will help you to succeed. And I think those principles really helped me a lot in my journey in the last few years now. Thank you so much, Thank you. Ram. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving that overview of working with different cultures <clears throat> and as a leader, why, how we need to change ourselves to adapt to various things first. I know you started this journey after the corporate career in the uh, entrepreneurship, wherein you are currently working on trying to put micro centers in the tier two, tier three and tier four cities. That is what you are working on. Can you give a little bit uh, details about concept, overview of this? What is it you are trying to work on? It? Absolutely, Ram. In fact, uh, you know, this was not something which came by chance, something which I thought about and did it very consciously after a period of a long career and successful career. But I should say the turning point uh, was the pandemic. Uh, the, the whole concept that we have to meet each other physically. You have to have your team with yourself next to you. Has led to a lot of concentration of work in some of the major cities in India. Uh, what surprised really was when the pandemic struck and when we went to a work from home scenario, 
uh, I, I realized 70% of my team was working with more than 100 cities in India. Okay. That realization really dawned on me saying, in spite of it, such a distributed model of working, things are going well. So it was really a myth that earlier we should say, oh, we should have our people next to us to see them at a beck and call, call them, they should be in front of you physically, etc. There were a lot of myths floating in the whole world in that sense. And if you look at in that sense, what has happened in a social economic impact is that the entire ITS or BPO industry in India, which is fueling a lot of growth and many of the industries in India are concentrated in just 10 cities. Okay. Just 10 cities were the growth is, and you could see the cities are choking. And if you're living in a city like Bangalore, where I live today, to travel 20 kilometers, I took two hours. Complete waste of productive time. Multiply that with the millions of people who are spending that you know, unproductive time. What would have done wonders with the economy and their own output they can give to the country. So this dawned upon us and then really said that the future growth, if at all, has to happen in a country like India, has to be from the small towns. And today people are working for small towns. They have moved back. They are working there successfully. Uh, both the employees are benefiting and the companies or the employers are benefiting. Okay, I'm not just saying from a cost point of view, but also from a mental well-being, uh, you know, their social impact which you're creating, etc. See, uh, you know, like any other people, I also came from a small town. I know I, I, I got educated there and then I shifted or migrated myself to Bangalore first for a job, then moved to Chennai, then abroad. But trust me, if I had a great job and opportunity in my hometown, I would have never left that place. I still love it. There's an emotional bonding which I have mm. with the place. Mm. Uh, I have my folks out there. My comfort is far more different. Uh, I'm a, much more at peace and I can contribute larger, much more in my work if I'm at that. Right? When I, fam I know my family is taken care of. I'm much more relaxed in that sense. We miss these small things. When we come into a very nuclear family kind of thing where people migrate to big towns and settle there. And it's, 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 a, it's a lot more different feeling when you do that. So that's how three or four of us got together. And uh, that's when I made a conscious decision to quit my corporate career and start something. Always wanted to do something different. But more so in mm -hmm. this case, the satisfaction of developing something different was a, was a big motivator. What we're doing at Micrographio is to set up uh, small uh, offices in uh, the rural towns, the Thai three towns, where we can allow companies to get their employees to work either permanently on a hybrid model because you know while work from home caught all of us unawares and it became a norm it is not a sustainable model the indian housing mechanism is not built for uh, work from home or a home office in that sense in many places and you also have a lot of issues with the infrastructure be it power be it a lot of other things connectivity etc which uh, mm. secured and place gives you and obviously, once these waves are getting over, we always would want to think of working from a secure place. And that's our intent. And to us, we are leaving the uh, the name of the company. Micro Graphio in Greek means small office. Micro is small, yes. Graphio is office. That is really what we are into. We are into the business of creating small offices in rural towns where professionals, uh, employees and companies can you know, engage themselves, uh, work together uh, and, and a very secure and connected environment. What we also do in this round and uh, Kiran is to bring a lot of associated services from a support point of view, be it an IT infrastructure, be it technology support, be it HR services, be it recruitment mm -hmm. support, etc., be it well-being, which many people cannot do on a small scale, which is there in a rural town. So that is a core proposition. We not only give an office space to them, but we also give a lot of assistance in much other areas. So what we call ourselves is a company which provides workspace, we provide workforce, and we provide essentials to them. So that is the fundamental model we are in because that allows many companies to focus on their core and leave the rest for us to manage. Uh, mm -hmm. One more aspect which really <laughs> motivated us to set up micro centers was the startup ecosystem. We realized that in many states, 80% of startups are registered in the capitals, Bangalore, Chennai, etc. Okay? Very few are registered and set up in these small towns. But that is where people are coming with a lot of ideas, a lot of innovation, a lot of energy. They're coming to these cities primarily to get the support system. The ecosystem is not thriving enough. 
we want to bring the ecosystem to the small towns where if there are entrepreneurs budding entrepreneurs there, there are people just out of colleges who won't have a novel idea we would like to bring them to our office and give them the entire support system what they need to nurture their talent nurture their aspirations and uh, you know bring their dreams come true so that is another real motivating factor for us to go back to the rural towns i i loved thank you, i loved thank the you, video uh, and yeah thank you santosh for yes. uh, outlining the micro center it's a great concept looks like and as you were talking to me i was also be working from home for the last two plus years i see those challenges mm. today even for taking this interview i have to make many people silence to do that working from home that has got those challenges definitely it is there some of it is in my control some of it is not in my control as i know Absolutely. these are all some of these uh, center how potentially going to help it is from the point of it and it yes sector is concerned how do you think this is going to definitely help those people uh, in that direction so ram this is this this has to be looked as a very essential element going forward more to me than a uh, a choice in that sense uh, there are two reasons for it one is obviously the 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 talent availability now in metros clearly if you look at many of the cities today the talent has migrated from small towns and come there it's not that the city has generated the talent on its own they all come back from the small towns and the more we are able to reach closer to the home of people and provide them employment there the better for the society not just from the individual but the local ecosystem you know the local ecosystem works mm, a lot when you have these kind of money being generated the bank being generated in the city and spent right mm. number one is that number two going forward for any company like it is a issue uh, every year cost optimization is very important metros are becoming costly not just from a real estate point of view but from a cost of living point of view also so the more you go towards small towns the cost of acquisition of an employee the cost of uh, you know the employee cost in terms of salaries and benefits etc the the other hidden cost which you typically pay to an employee in a city like transport for example in bangalore i see every day some hundreds and thousands of cabs running around you know dropping people you don't need that in a small town the distance is small uh that way there are a lot of savings for a company to go to a small town and set up these small centers uh and for them it is primarily to me from an its industry point of view it is just couple of objectives which will drive this distributed model of work one is cost optimization number two is talent availability and outreach because you just cannot going forward the demand india is experiencing and the exponential growth with the industry is going to experience in the next few years restrict your operations to the metros and expect talent to come there and work for you you have to go near the talent tap them recruit them train them and nurture them that's the only way to survive so to me it's not something which is a choice as i said earlier it will be an essential element of your strategy going forward that is absolutely right you are saying you no know, as we hear and uh, from the news and various what is it currently happening when i was working in corporate also we know that there is a certain amount of people can work from home and which was not possible because of the uh, luxury of those offices which we had and we wanted to work there in the new normal i'm sure people are going to have certain good amount of population is going to be working from home and given that how do you see you were uh, you know you are working with your clients and people we see the growth potential for this uh, micro center is shaping up according to you absolutely uh, there is a lot of scope we are talking to a lot of startups right away and there's a great appetite in the startup ecosystem to uh, working out of small towns see the energy which is coming there in that is is is, is really something which will spread even to us right when you talk to them and say i want to set up a my my company in trichy i want to set up in uh, vinad i want to set up in trivandrum kollam nellur etc you feel excited saying oh yeah it's great why only i hear a chennai and bangalore and hyderabad okay that's all you hear in the mm. south of india when you go beyond that you hear mumbai noida gurgaon pune that's it that's over and done with right it's not what you want you want to go to the interior rural towns there are a lot of uh, 
work which is happening there which is not recognized or coming to the mainstream and uh, more importantly the way i see it uh, i feel a significant shift which will happen in the in the growth of india going forward if you want to be a fighter in economy the growth cannot be in these metros and taiwan cities anymore it has to happen out of the tai 3 and tai 4 and tai 2 cities going forward and we have to ensure not just the the the, the infrastructure and the ecosystem to be there a lot of government support which you are experiencing now you have met few of the officials from the government and they are very keen to bring work to the small towns in that sense going forward so we we hear a lot of positive vibes in the entire thing and uh many companies are also as they're recognizing the need for this and and i'm sure uh, it's a matter of time there are you know right now we are still in the pandemic stage uh people are probably reluctant to uh, move out of home and work because of the multiple ways but you know we are almost reaching a stage i still personally believe there's a fag end of the pandemic at some point of time we can't afford to run the way it is today and once that is done mm. there's a lot more Uh, you know the people to move around and you know come back to uh, secure offices and do the way they were want to do because one more thing now i'll tell you in this whole situation is we are forgetting the the kind of culture which we need to build in any company okay we can work mm-hmm. remotely we can see each others in zoom and all these online platforms but that is not going to mm-hmm. help build culture you recruit a new employee and the new employee is always sitting at home and seeing everybody through the screen he's not understanding the touch and feel of you need a physical environment you need to meet people you need to experience that to bring the culture of the organization that's how great cultures and organizations are just born and that doesn't need to be in a centralized office it can be any office or small offices but you need to get that social connect and human beings are social beings right we need to have that okay so Absolutely. it will happen absolutely So Santosh let me ask you this follow up one I wanted to ask Kiran whether she has got anything relating to Yeah yeah so far So I was actually I'm loving the conversation in fact I just saw the way you had you were able to identify the problem statement which is there and using the pandemic you've actually as I said we were just be talking before this that it's actually pandemic has been a a, a blessing in disguise because it gave us so much opportunity to think outside the box and you literally took that opportunity and realized that people are no longer interested in working from metros they actually want to go to these smaller places and work closer to home and then addressing the core issue which all of us today are facing working from home having these diy lighting setups that we are trying to have so that this meeting can go seamlessly the internet connection my god i'm in nepal and the internet was not working so everything was you know so i'm glad that all these things are being uh, addressed by your com- company so, so the question over here santosh was in your opinion i mean not your opinion where how where are you currently located in terms of which cities have you already reached and what is your vision i mean i know you've said you want to take it all over with the government support so what is your i would say one year plan or your five year plan for this company what's the vision that you see yourself so in five years uh, kiran and i know this is going to be a bit of a long journey we want to have thousands micro centers across uh 300 cities in india okay and we have done some analysis mm. in terms of which of these cities we want to go uh there okay. is it, it depends on a uh, certain data which we have collected in terms of the population the education uh, ecosystem supply of talent etc and in 5 years we want to open up almost 1000 micro centers across and by way of these uh we 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 really believe that a lot more uh, work which were hitherto done in the metros will move the and it will also help a uh, lot more entrepreneurship in the in the in the, in the local towns to you know prosper more importantly for us to do that because we will collectively give them a lot more support uh in in uh, uh, with respect to what they want to do we today are moving into you know uh, towns like chengalpet uh, salem uh, trichy Uh, Virudhunagar, uh, Hosur, uh, Trivandrum, uh, of course, Kochi. We already mm-hmm. have uh, Calicut. Uh, in in the end, we are going to go to Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. We'll reach there. Uh, so these are small towns which probably people wouldn't have gone and set up something, but we see a real demand out there coming out. It is exciting. I loved it. 
I loved it when you said that it's so true. Talent is not going to come to us. We have to go to the talent. I love that part about it. In fact, Santosh, I have one more follow up question. We always say leaders walk the talk. They are the ones who build the culture of the organization. So you spoke about culture from the other perspective that how come other micro, uh, micro offices are going to create that culture. Can you share what kind of culture are you promoting in your office space as a leader? Well, um, I look at two things. One is within my company and one within my office space. Okay. Clearly, okay. the way we want to look at is in both the places, uh, we want to promote uh, 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 an environment of uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. Going forward, we believe that everybody in the organization should behave like an entrepreneur. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless they wear the hat of that and then start thinking about the problems and the solutions, we end up being an executor. Mm -hmm. now, very often I've realized in my corporate life, okay, and this is very anecdotal maybe that, but I often see we giving a standard operating procedure to a 30-year-old guy and saying, just go by the dot. Don't, your job is to just do what is written in the standard operating procedure. <laughs> ABC. Don't think. This is what we tell you. Right. Okay. In execute. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Same beautiful role probably takes more important decision is personal life. Okay. He has a family. He is a father. He is a son. He is a brother. A, a lot of important decisions in personal life that, that, that individual takes. But the day he walks into his office, we are saying leave your decision making capabilities outside. You are just to follow this process. That's what you are proud for. A very interesting concept, right? So to me, I want to move away from that. I've, I've experienced that myself. I'm not saying I've not done it for the sake of uh, the cultures out there. I've done it for me going forward. It has to be everybody should think like an entrepreneur saying, I take ownership of the problem. I take ownership of what I do. Mm. I take accountability of what I do. The money... I spent in the company is as good as the money I spent from my own pocket. Then I realized the importance of mm. what is expenditure, how difficult it is when I spend it. I take ownership to achieve the results what collectively we have signed up for and then do that. And I will innovate my solutions. Obviously, I'll think of various aspects to do that. But unless you get the freedom for that, you know, you're not going to execute. And why are startups succeeding? Because they got the freedom to do it. As a company, you know, you don't restrict yourself. Our company doesn't today have an SOP today. We say, boss, you have a problem, sort it out, move on. We will learn over a period of time, right? You're evolving. Each time you're evolving, it's something new. Uh, you know, you, you bring up some new ideas. You crack something which you cannot do it. But if you're going with the operating procedure, which is strictly written, you are restricting the thought process. So the environment, Kiran, in simplistic terms is what I want to do is if every employee behaves like an entrepreneur and we give an environment for them to nurture that that is when true success will emerge going forward than a very restrictive place where you are recruited just to do a particular job in the whole sequence and you have lost your thinking process i'm going to take one last question before handing it over to ram for his last question too my question yeah. is going to be uh santosh can you give me three characteristics that describe you as a leader <laughs> okay uh, one is focus okay mm -hmm. i i'm absolutely focused in terms of what i uh, want to do second is uh, responsibility we own up mm -hmm. there's no other place to go and you know leave it to saying blame somebody else you own up for everything which you want to do uh, mm -hmm. and, and the third is uh, innovation. You know, I always look at okay. it's you know it's creativity, creativity, and my strength is a bit of creativity in that sense. So you have to be creative. So that that is what that's that's what you've exactly tried to bring in in the culture when you're saying because if you are innovative and you are allowing a responsibility, as you said, if everyone starts taking responsibility as an entrepreneur the company will, every employee will feel that they are responsible for their Absolutely. own organization. So Absolutely. over to you, Ram, for your last question. Thank you. Thank you, for Kiran, for adding a few valuable questions uh, from there and insights from Santos on those. The My last question to you, uh, 
is I agree with you. One of the things is you need to go for, look at the challenge and start looking at that is where as a leader, we all start growing up, definitely. And I'm sure I wanted you to, what would be your one message to emerging leaders during this tough time? What is that they need to look at? But what is that they should start doing it and start doing it? Uh, See, it's very difficult to create just one single message, but if I may summarize in a very different way. Uh, the world is changing. We have as leaders to uh, start accepting ambiguity and deal with that. There is no certainty. The world was never the same two years back. None of us accepted this. Second is adapt to change quickly. Change is the only constant. You're stuck to a particular point you will have something new coming up every day. It's like who somebody told me this earlier. Every day is a new day. What you did yesterday is not applicable today. You have to go with that mind. So in a national realm, learn to live with ambiguity. Understand that. And if you're not able to adapt to change very, very rapidly, you won't succeed. Wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that insight. And thank you for... Uh, joining today and sharing your thoughts and i think it is an innovative thought basically what you started is the challenging time gave birth to this micro graphio what is it you started and uh, working on it uh, definitely uh, i'm sure that is going to be the day and people are going that one always that single idea which makes the difference you had come up with it and doing it and great plans to know about it and i'm sure I, we will wish all the best for your this organization to grow leaps and bounds and benefit the entire tier two, tier three, tier four cities and where we wanted to see more and more of employment generation and things are in better shape for that. Thank you. And uh, with that, uh, I'll end the session or uh, we, Kiran, you have any closing thoughts? I, I would like to say thank you to Santosh Malingam uh, um, to be joining us today. And this was a very valuable session. My key takeaways, as Santosh has just shared, be an adapted leader, be innovative, be creative, and always think that every project is your own. So be an owner as an emerging leader, because this growth journey is only possible when you're going to be taking those risks, when you're going to be coming out of your comfort zone, and when you're going to be standing outside that crowd and not following it. Number two is that in this pandemic, we all have grown and Santosh has come up with this amazing idea of going to the talent. So these smaller towns are where the talent is and we all are growing, going to be possible for us to grow from where we are. So I want to say thank you to Santosh as well as Ram for joining us and all our listeners of Leadership Talks for Emerging Leaders. Do follow us on Spotify as well as Apple Podcasts. Till next week, we'll be back with another leader to share their growth journey with all of you. Thank you very much for being part of the show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.